Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to be taking the previous trigger bot we made, which currently does not work due to the offsets being outdated. So, for example, nothing's happening when I'm holding the hold down hotkey that we made. So, we're going to be updating those offsets, which I actually have a video on. We're going to be setting the trigger bot so the fire rate is controlled by the distance of the player from the enemy he's aiming at. So for example, I'm, I don't know, 17 meters from this guy. It's going to spray just like normal. But if I aim at this guy and I'm at a distance, it's just going to go pop, 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 pop. Something to, so instead of it just, you know, spraying all over the place and not having much control, because as you know with the trigger bot, when you're holding down the hotkey and you're aiming and you try to control the recoil but you get off the target, stops firing. So instead it'll just be pop, 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 and just get the kill. So first thing we can do, we have our dumped offsets from Haze Dumper. I already know local players the same. So just search for attack one. Did that even highlight? Oh, here it is. Go ahead and copy it, paste it, Search for entity list. There's quality, there's the list. Paste it in. Crosshair. Copy that, paste it in. And just, I'm pretty sure the local player didn't change. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, the only other offset we're going to need to add now for this is the vector origin, which is our x, y, and z coordinates. So just search for origin. Uh, there it is. So and that offset is 1, 3, 4. So we're going to make a new offset. Vec origin. And just vector origin equals, well, that. I'm also going to show you how to make a your own kind of vector that makes it really easy to hold X, Y, and Z well, positions. So the logic behind this is we're going to call handle tbot if we're allowed a tbot, well, trigger bot, such as if this button is being held down or if F2 has been toggled. So it's going to call this function. It's going to go to check tbot. It's going to run through the checks. So if the person, the thing we're aiming at is not on our team, well, first of all, if the thing we're aiming at is a player, like the ID returned, what it returns is actually a player or a bot, we're going to run through all this crap, then we're going to do the check. If that player does not equal our team, so he is an enemy, and he is alive because his health is greater than zero, we're going to call our function to get the distance between us and that entity and that in turn is going to set a delay on the trigger bot so we're going to go ahead and make a new variable just a uh, int tb delay and we're going to go ahead and just for example sleep foul dot tb delay so we're going to assign generally what i like to do is get the distance from us to the player and just literally multiply that by three times three for just kind of as an in general base to go off of as that's just a good pretty much a good control depending that varies properly depending on distance uh, and another tutorial on top of this later we will be going over how to get the weapon ID so we know exactly what weapon we have in our hands and we can alter what that delay is. So for instance like a rifle such as the AUG where you actually can look through the optic. That is very easy to hold on control and doesn't really bounce around a whole lot when you're spraying. So that can have a higher fire rate than something like the AK or the FAMAS for example. So we have our quote unquote delay here. Now we can go ahead and make that little vector. Well, what we're going to use to take in the vector. So we're going to make a new structure. Struct. We're going to call it vector. 
Now in here, we want to get our x, y, and z coordinates, and those are always generally going to be floats. So we're going to make it a type float. We're just going to have x, y, and z. So when we read it in, we're going to read it into the vector, and it's going to store the positions in x, y, and z when we do a read process memory. So that way when we want to access it, such as uh, that whatever vector my vec dot x equals 10 we can access it well not exactly like that but so pretty much we can use the dot operator so we can access x y and z which you'll see here in a second alright so we want to have it we do, yeah we want to have it in here so if the player is able to fire we're gonna call the function to set the delay so we can go ahead and just make that uh, I guess just call it get distance. Now we can easily get ourselves. So pretty much it read the offset reads off of the local player slash entity and the vector origin offset. So for us, we would just read off a local player and add this offset. For the person we're looking at, we need the entity here plus this offset. So we're going to need to pass in well, the offset to this entity. So we're going to take in a D word and just call it entity for the function. So now we do our function call, get distance, and we're going to pass in the entity that is in our crosshair here, if you remember from the previous tutorial. So now this is going to run, and we can get both of our distances, well, x, y, and z coordinates. Oh, uh, one more thing you're going to want to do. This does come included in IO stream, but in case you don't have that. So you want to include CMath to use some of the functions we're going to be using. So that's called get here. We're going to go ahead and get the distance. So we have our vector created right here. So we're going to do vector my location equals mem class dot read mem and it's going to be a type vector so the address we're going to go off of is our local player plus the vector origin offset so val dot local player plus offset dot vector origin and now just to see if we have the right one we're going to go and print off our z coordinates so c out my location dot c you can see how that list comes up. We can choose between X, Y, and Z. And end the line. Actually, just so it doesn't shoot when I aim, so we can see a little easier. And minimize you and go here. Alright, so... As you can see, I'm aiming at this guy, so it's spamming my Z coordinates. Now I'm going to jump. And you can see they, it's kind of hard because I keep getting in the way of that. But you can see how it it's my Z coordinates when I jump. It goes higher and so on. So we know that's working. So now we can go ahead and get the enemy coordinates. So vector enemy location equals mem class dot read mem vector. Then we're going to read in the vet from the entity that we just passed in, which is the enemy in our crosshairs. So entity plus offset dot vector origin. So now we can just see location dot x, just because this should be different for each one we aim at. So we have 128, 384, 576 and back to 128 and so on and so on. So that is correct. So in order to get the distance we're just going to be a float. We're just going to do float distance. And we want to set that equal to the square root of my location minus n location to the power of 2. So my location dot x minus enemy location dot x 
to the power of 2. Just like so. Now we're going to do that for y and z. I'm going to save time, I'm just going to copy it. So plus the same thing for our y, plus the same thing for our z. So for the second half, change this to y for enemy. I mean, my location and enemy. Change the last portion to z, and again to z. Now, this won't give us our exact location because it's in, uh, I believe by default it's in units, which is what CS reads by. So, units, for example, um, standing on flat ground, your eye level should be, I think it's like 64 units above the floor. So, in order to convert this to meters, we need to multiply it by 0 0.0254, and that should return the distance in meters. So, now just to check, we can print this out. So C out, distance, and end the line. So this guy, 8.1 meters, walk forward, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And as you can see, it's working just fine. We're getting the distance between us and the person that we're aiming at. So, dog's getting loud. So now we can take this and just kind of use it as a general base. So we're going to want to alter the delay. So we can set the delay to, I think I already said, but I generally use distance times 3.3 .3 to get pretty much the value that I like for well, me personally, the delay between shots. So we can do val.tbdelay equals distance times 3.3. .3. Then to show the example, we can run it. So now for this first guy real close, it should be normal shooting speed. As you can see, it's quite quick. Now if we go to the far end, and we aim at this guy. You can see how it just tapped itself. Same thing for this guy, this guy, and this guy should be faster. You can see how that's working. I'm going to go back close. You can just see how it gets slower and slower with each shot, well, depending on the distance. Uh, but the problem being is, this is also going to kind of affect your bolt actions with the way we have it set up. Which, that can actually be resolved, but... Uh, one thing we're also going to do in the next tutorial, actually I may end up trying to do that tonight, but it's 2 in the morning. Uh, you can say that it delays, well, I mean it fires when you're not looking through the scope, such as that. And... I generally don't like that, because if I have it toggled or if I'm hovering over someone by accident, it'll just randomly pop off a shot. And that looks a little odd when you kind of swipe past someone if you're by chance being overwatched or being spectated. So we're going to do it so it will not fire until you're looking through the scope, which I have not done yet. Well, we'll just do that in the tutorial. That is actually incredibly easy to do but we want to check and filter out our weapons. Like, we literally do that with our... Uh, I'll be doing that with the check, so what I'm trying to... S okay, start from scratch. We're going to be doing the checking if you're looking through the scope and the tutorial in which we filter the weapons to alter the delay of which ones we want. So, for example, the M4A4, we can have it shoot pretty quickly compared to, let's say, the FAMAS which generally has just a little bit bigger of a wider of a spray. So Yeah, I guess that's actually literally it for all this one. That's very simple. Just to go through and reiterate. So if we are holding the button on our mouse to toggle our ability to use the trigger bot 
or we use our hotkey to toggle it on or off, we call the handle tbot function. Inside that function, it checks if what we're looking at is a valid, well, entity slash person or bot. So it gets what's in our crosshair, gets the ID, checks if it does not equal zero, and if it's less than 64, which is pretty much the max that you're going to have in the server, it gets the entity that we're aiming at, gets the team of that entity, gets the health of the entity, checks if they're alive and not on our team. If that is the case, then it calls our get distance function, which gets our location and stores it in our little vector structure. Gets the same thing with the enemy location. We get the distance in meters by getting the square root. Well, you can literally just read it right freaking here. The end result, and which is based in, I believe, units. Then we take convert it to meters. We multiply it by 0 0.0254. Then to set our delay, we simply do distance times 3.3. And that's literally what we have our delay here set to. It's simple as that. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you love guided hacking, please like and subscribe and share our videos with your friends. If you want to donate, guidedhacking.com slash donate. You can use PayPal, cryptocurrency, or become a patron on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more.